Hello, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Witness Me, a Raleigh-based video battle report cast. Our goal is to provide what we hope is quality commentary of local games and provide some exposure to the local Raleigh meta. For this episode, commentary is provided by myself and our local pundit, Juan. Well, hello, everybody. I, uh, as our first episode, please bear with us as uh, we are just testing the feel a little bit on this, and uh, but hopefully you do enjoy the game. Uh, this will be between Two of our good local players, uh, Dave playing Alchemists and Jeff playing Butchers. Um, so I'll hand it back over to Brian to get us going. My name is Brian Will. I'm a Raleigh local. I've been wargaming in Raleigh for about six years now. Um, I started with War Machine and Hordes, uh, playing Signar and then into Trolls. And then I moved to Guild Ball uh, fall, in, fall of 2016. I started Alchemist right at the end of Season 2. Um, fell in love with them and stuck with them through season three until farmers came. Well, until everything was leaked for farmers, and I am now proxying them and just attempting to beat the crap out of everybody I can. How about yourself, Juan? Uh, yeah, I've been um, war gaming on and off for for several years. I'm pretty big into the North Carolina Warhammer fantasy scene back in the day. Um, played almost every collectible card game you could imagine. Um, right now, I am focused on Fisherman. I uh, got into Guild Ball probably about six months after release. Um, brought it into our Raleigh area and uh, love me some Shark, love me some Corsair. Um, also, been da- uh, testing out the farmers a little bit and uh, own a few other teams as well, but nothing can ever be the three goal game, in my opinion. So that's where I'm at. All right. So for our structure. Each episode will assess a local game and we'll try to break it down from the draft to the close. We'll take some pauses along the way, particularly at the end of turns, to assess specific situations, game state, what we see as smart moves or mistakes by either player. At the end, we will firmly shove the boot in and provide our overall thoughts on the game. Before we get started, I will make one request to our viewers. Please remember that our players are human and mistakes do happen. We'll address them as needed, but we prefer to focus on gameplay and tactics, not breaking people down, and we ask viewers to have the same consideration, especially in light of rules mistakes. They happen to the best of us, we try to learn from them, we move on. So, without any further ado, we'll move into our match. Our game today is Dave's Alchemist versus the Butchers of Jeff. For the plot cards, the Alchemists have Knee Slider, Wingback, and Man Marking. Butchers have Who Are You? Field dressing and heroic landing. So for the draft process, we have initial picks of Vitriol and Naja by the Alchemist player. And the Butcher's just laying Princess out there, followed up by Fulay. Midas is the captain for the Alchemist. Well, yes, obviously. Is there any other pick? Do they even have another captain? You know, I don't think so. Um, I, I guess, w- wait, Smoke? 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 Oh, okay. Something like that? Something like that? Fine. There's Tinderizer. That's interesting. The Tinderizer choice is curious. Followed by pretty standard Catalyst, then a pair of Harrys from both teams. Um, as we get into Meat Hook, who loves to pair with Filet. I believe right. that our Alchemists have one more, and Butchers have the last pick. Yep, there went Compound. And Compound is met by Veteran Ox. So, after the draft process, what do you think of the picks on each side, Alon? Um, well, my initial concern is, is I, I thought, um, not necessarily a concern, but I thought Naja was an interesting choice, you know, rather than the robot. Um, you know, I, I'll let you speak to that on more of the alchemist side. Uh, on the, uh, the other interesting thing I'd be curious to hear your thoughts about was, um, no cattle or, uh, no, um, calculus. Because calculus, the blind on play can, can be really good. What do you, what do you think about those two picks? Everything else seemed, felt standard to me. Well, Naja, I think it's, um, since this was particularly, this was in the 10-man era before, or in the 9-man era, excuse me, before the we went to 10-man on the draft roster. So no matter what, there was only going to be one mascot pick. Naja does have the benefits of Hypnosis, um, which frequently is useful if you see Boar on the table, for example, shutting down his um, second, his second bot attack after his serious charge. But he also has the advantage of unpredictable movement, so he can be a good ball holder at times. Um compound i think is the standard battery he doesn't he can do plenty if somebody gets in range but you don't need him to do much work 
with the Vitriol Catalyst Midas team, you were influence hungry. I can buy that, but the, the only thing I was thinking was, you know, uh, with the, the team like Jeff has laid out here, which is not a heavy, heavily goal scoring team, would Calculus also not serve as the same battery and then come in when, when needed? She very well could. Um, I don't think it, Calculus would have been a bad pick in this situation. I do think, um, I will say that I do think Gluttonous Mass does also help that if he ever has to move Compound up the field. But, but... Fair enough. And Calculus can be an easy takeout sometimes. Yeah, 4-1 four, four, and 14 boxes, I believe. Fair enough. Um, as far as the Butchers were concerned, you know, as uh, goal-heavy as Alchemist can tend to be, I still personally felt like Pendrizer is a pretty bold choice. Um, we'll see how impactful he ends up being. Uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting was um, he didn't choose Boar, and also he did not choose either Brisket. I'm going with Veteran Ox and Lou. And, you know, from the games that I've seen, Veteran Ox really doesn't pull his weight that much. Now, I know in this match, you know, maybe he's banking on that uh, that two-inch melee being pretty good. But I'm also going to be really curious to see if Veteran Ox actually pulls his weight in this game. I, I think I would have rather had four in that spot, and I think I would rather would have had either Brisket in the Tenderizer spot. What do you think? I think that one of those spots definitely... Brisket, the missing brisket, um, particularly veteran for the, um, what is it, quick time or quick foot? Um, get the two mixed up. Um, that is a big missing. Not having that two-inch dodge, it gets you, leaves you stuck in situations. It limits your mobility. Um, I do think, and Tenderizer is also only a 1-4. You're on an influence-heavy team, or an influence-hungry team. You're suddenly down one further influence, which worries me in some cases. We'll see how it goes, though. I mean, maybe maybe Tinderizer blocks a crucial shot, and and we um we eat our hats. So we'll see how it goes. That's been known to happen. So with our deployment, we see the um, butchers beginning their deployment on the right. We have veteran ox for the top, followed by meat hook, Tinderizer, fillet, Harry, and the dog. It looks like fillet will be kicking off. Looks like she has the ball. Yep. And on the Alchemist side, we've got Harry, Vitriol, uh, Nausea, Compound, Catalyst, Midas down here at the bottom. So here we have the Butcher kickoff. Looks like he's going to be trying to aim maybe for that ice up there. I think he's comparing both of his options. He's seeing where he can get the ball on both sides. Um, looks like he's trying to take advantage of the forest, cutting off some angles on this side. Oh, is he going to go on that forest side? Yeah, he does. Hmm. I'm going to hand the ball right to Midas. Yeah, with Harry on the far end of that other, um, with Harry on the far end of that other line, I'm not sure. I, that might have been a prime location to kill the ball for a while. Yeah, I definitely think I would have kicked it to that ice because Harry's not exactly very speedy. And he has, what, a 2-6 kick? Is that right? That's correct. Um, he's only a 2-6. I don't and think he'd be able to chase it down and get the vitriol. And I believe he's a 5-7, or is he a 5-8? He's a 5-7, yeah. So there's Midas. He does pick up the ball and passes to Catalyst. But he misses, as you can see the scatter template there. This is a pretty big mistake, in my opinion, on his part, because there was an extra influence on Midas, and he forgot to super shot, which was the reason for only a three-dice pass. Um, so it looks like uh, Butcher is just trying to see if um, Meat Hook can get into... Midas there, and it looks like he's just going to be a little bit shy, probably due to the forest. So he just takes a little jog with Tim Verizon. Cat misses, or Catalyst misses the pass too. That's not a promising start for the Alchemist player, um, managing to miss both of your initial passes to get the momentum train rolling. And it looks like Catalyst is just going to rearrange slightly. Um, I think he's trying to respect Foley's threat range. Dog moved just a little there. And it looks like, uh, I think that he's going to be moving Harry, um, looking to where he can set a Molotov, most likely. Yep, there's the fire. Again, respecting that threat range of Foy. I think we have all been in those shoes many a time. Now, Compound still does have the ball right now. If he doesn't make this pass to Vitriol, it's going to be, um, it's going to be pretty bad because she won't be able to get that free four inch dodge. He does have one influence on Nadja. Um, it's not what you want to be relying on, but it is a possibility. Oh, he moved Nadja. Never mind. Yeah. That's a little bit of a risky move. One dice pass is 
not always a good possibility, but it is a backup if something goes wrong. I believe compound's a 2-6, though. I was thinking of Nadja called the scatter. Uh, oh, I got you. oh, and here's the butcher uh, Maltov going down as well. Lots of fire in the middle of that table. That's a solid play. Um, I don't know if it's going to be enough to prevent Vitriol from getting into his lines if she does get the pass, but um, it is a standard good Harry play. So there we did see the pass was successful. It took that um, four, free, four inch dodge for free. Oh man, look, Filet is activating a little bit early and putting down a um, blood template onto the field. That that is questionable in my opinion. Yes, I, that does that not does not feel like an optimal situation. You're using a lot of influence for no real gain. Vitriol doesn't need to move over through that side of the field. And looks like we're going to be buying an attack on the dog here. And gets that push dodge. So he's now in goal range. And he has disengaged the dog as well. I think he buys one more attack here. Puts up the coin. Yeah. And uh, scores that goal. The Alchemist up to a quick 4-0. And Dave will play knee slider here, which is going to give him a very, very long run back out of the line of fire. Didn't quite make it to that cover, though. No, but no. he could have gone back through the fire to get into Um, I think he cleared his conditions along the way. Uh, there is no uh, fire. There is no fire coming. Yeah. So I think he was wanting to have his full options for the next turn, not having the ball limited. Butchers kicked that ball off wide to the top of your screen there near that icy patch. Pretty good ball kill. And it uh, looks like Meat Hook just kind of dies. So after turn one, um, I think we both have some initial thoughts. I was a little surprised at the delivery of the ball to Midas. I think his thought was that he could kill Midas' first activation and prevent the snare by making Midas go chase the ball first. But I'm not sure I think that was the wisest idea. Personally, I mean, I, I think we briefly mentioned this, was if he had kicked the ball up towards that ice, I mean... You know, without having a template out, it's, it's possible for me to know for sure. And, you know, we can't predict the scatter, but I, I really doubt Harry would be able to get that ball and get it back to Vitriol. So, you know, if you'd gone on the other direction, you know, you're, you're making him use a not very quick player to go get the ball. I mean, Vitriol maybe could have gone got it herself, but she's certainly not going to go get it and score in the same turn. So then you'd need a date. I don't know. I mean, I'd have to see the way it was lined up again, but it just definitely felt to me like kicking it top of the screen would have been much more optimal as far as killing the ball would have been concerned. Well, and I think that, Al interestingly, that did actually lead into what I think may have been a big mistake by the Alchemist player at this point, because not getting the pass meant Midas did not have his free four-inch dodge, which would have brought him much more into the middle of the pitch. He's rather isolated right now. He's a little bit out of the game, I think. Yeah, he's a little bit out of the game, but Midas isn't necessarily slow either. I mean, he, he can get to where he needs to be. But we'll see how it goes. The ball is in a very awkward spot for the Alchemist right now. Yeah, I think actually Nadja probably has the best chance of getting to it, which is not the situation that you probably want to be in right now. I will also say, and this is um a little, this is maybe a little pickier, but I, if you're going to pick Tenderizer, I think in that situation you need to plan out all your movements to take advantage of Tenderizer's counter charge. He boxed in Tinderizer pretty heavily with veteran Ox, Brisket, um, and Princess, so there was no real angles to move on. Do you think it's really going to end up mattering, though? I mean, I would imagine that the Alchemist player is going to let the Butchers come into him. Um, that's most it's possible, but what I was thinking of was for that Vitriol goal. Right, um, right. Yeah, I can see what you're saying there. And, you know, that actually brings me to my, my next thing I'd like to talk about here. Why, um, why would you... Do you see any benefit of running that um, second to last fillet activation for that blood template? Not that I can think of, no. Um, I actually think that that might have been, that was a pretty big mistake because especially you could kill the ball where she was, but you got no use out of fillet. The blood rain really was not along a line that Vitriol wanted to take. And she's, I mean, if she did, she, she, she would more than, be more than happy to bleed herself for four points. Oh, yes, and Alchemist, as long as she hit at least one or two attacks, she would have the the momentum to be able to clear. Right. Yeah, that's very curious to me, because he, he essentially had, he essentially let the Alchemist go last, because, I mean, it, as you can see, Meat Hook didn't do anything. Meat Hook moved a little bit, and that was it. You know, where I think as, if, I see he's trying to prevent that goal somehow, but if he had gone ahead and just, you know, taken it, cut the losses where, you, where you've already, you know, it's really hard to stop Vitriol's goal. 
you just cut that as a say, hey, that's going to happen. There's nothing I can do about it. Go ahead and tool up Filet. And at least, you know, that way Filet can hopefully have a chance of getting in on vitriol on that last activation. Bank yourself up some momentum and then see if you can't kill her on the first activation of turn two. Even if you just set up for the, even if you just set fully up for the first couple of activations, um, right now she's kind of crowded in in the middle of everybody. I know that she has the mobility to get places, but could have saved quite a bit of influence potentially by setting up in the right position. Agreed. But anyway, um, looks like we will have Alchemist up on. Uh, they'll have two momentum on the roll off. So we'll see. Um, we'll see who wins this initiative race. And we'll go into turn two. So it looks like Butchers actually do end up winning that roll at minus two, which hopefully will be good for them. Well, it does give them some initial possibility to get a first strike to start rearranging the Alchemist lines. Um, they do have a big opportunity in that they do have more killing power, and the ball is well dead for the moment. So it looks like we're going to be allocating uh, two to Harry, two to Veteran Ox, five to Play, and two to Mila on the Butcher side. And on the Alchemist sides, it looks like we have one on Naja, we have two on Harry, we have four on Vitriol. Um, oh, excuse me. Hold on. I was just reading that entirely wrong turn. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> looks like Harry has four, yeah. Catalyst has three, Vitriol has four, and Minus has two. That looks right. And it looks like we have a veteran ox charge into Harry, um, going for Whirling Chains, I believe. And Harry did counter charge, or counter attack, excuse me. I'm not sure I like that counterattack because I don't know if he can do enough against. I don't know if he can do enough with it against Ox. We'll take a look. So it does look like he does get a knockdown, which on the momentous whirling chains is easily cleared. Right. And then he rolls on vitriol and he's going to hit a get stuck in. And that's an interesting choice to me because what really is the benefit of get stuck in at this point other than just momentum? Well, it actually negates his. No, it does not negate his ability to crowd. He just does not benefit himself. All right. It just means that no one else can crowd him. So it's, it's effectively kind of a minus one dice aura. She, he does get he the does knockdown get the on knock Vitriol, however, and with the Alchemist player having used his momentum, she has to forfeit to stand. That's true. So and she does pop smoke there. And hits the momentous clone. It looks like a push dodge as well. And it looks like a second push dodge, I believe. So ball retrieval looks like it's off the table for the Alchemist player for the time being. But he's measuring Harry. You see that? He just took a little job with uh, Tenderizer there. I think he's waiting to see what... Um, He's waiting to try to react to the Alchemist player, which I'm going to be curious how that works out. So it looks like he's going to try to throw a goad on Filet here. And he did it. Yeah, wow. And I would bet that he's going to start pushing Veteran Ox right in the way. Normal Harry tactics when you can get him to work. And it looks like the knockdown followed by the first push. So, yep, he's going to try to line that up so that uh, the way will have to stop on off. Yeah, that puts this is where that lacking a dodge from veteran brisket becomes quite a big deal. So now he is going to retrieve that ball with Harry. That's really interesting to me because it's not like any of the alchemists are really in a great spot to go get it. Naja, maybe, but if Naja can hit the ice, but that's still, it's just going to be over there. It's not Naja can do anything. But... I'm going to guess he's going to try to put the ball back into play to try and move Bufalay out, out of the way. Out of the way. Yeah. I don't know if it's, it's worth it, though. Now, while this is happening, I will mention um, for the viewers, there was a rules mistake here. The ball would have crashed the, crossed the barrier, and it would have been stopped. Um, it was missed by the players, but the game continues. Happens to the best of us. So it looks like we have Meat Hook retrieving and making a pass, and that's two filleted. Yep, so at least now she'll get to use that influence. But that's a lot of influence sp spent by the Butcher player to bring fillet back into the game. That's a heavy loss, I think. Yeah, and Harry's way out there now. He'll be two turns before he's back into the game in any way. And we have... And we have I'm just worried that they hand deliver the ball back to the Alchemists here. There's a lot of good retrieval on the Alchemist side, so that's definitely a worry. And it looks like Midas is bringing Catalyst back into the game. Oh, yep, the lure of gold. So he got some good use out of that too. Uh, too uh, Midas rarely has dead influence. He can usually find some way to rearrange the board or something. Go ahead. 
I was going to say, so we have Filet going into Harry now. Looks like she hit the, the knockdown on the very first attack. And there's the blood ray. So in total across all of these attacks, um, Filet is going to do a knockdown blood rain on Harry um, and 11 damage additional to Harry, as well as passing the ball back to Meat Hook. 11 damage. That tool up goes a long way. Now, Harry did re did um, heal his crazy damage back up at the end of his activation, so he's not quite as injured as he would be if he had missed that. I'm still worried about that ball. <laughs> That's my fish side coming through. I'm worried about what Ox's face is about to look like after a catalyst yeah, gets yeah, all yeah. Looks like he hits a external combustion here. Starting to bring in the pain. Well, with Ox only being a 3-1, catalyst will tend to hit that more often than not. I think he got another external combustion there. And one more. And a wrap, actually. Wow. So Ox takes, um, I believe that would be 10 damage, three external combustions, and a wrap. And the fire, yeah. And it looks like he cleared the conditions on vitriol. Um, I'm sure that that bleed was not something he wanted to leave on vitriol. Here comes the snake. Get that snake momentum in. So I think he was trying to bait a counterattack out of the um, Butcher player, however. <laughs> That's fine. This is dangerous, too. Well, the snake it could have very easily backfired very quickly. Um, he did also clear Harry's conditions at the same time. So what do you think about turn two? I think the Alchemist player did everything he could have wanted to do except maybe ball retrieval, but honestly, with his position, I think he's pretty happy at this point. Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree. I mean, if you just look at the kind of... You've got uh, Midas down there, here's that forest still, and then um, Mitchell right up the gut. He's got both his, you know, big two-inch, or excuse me, his big uh, knockdown kind of guys, his bros, his linebackers, real central of the field. Um, Filet is probably still a little bit of a worry, uh, but, you know, I would not be surprised if either Vitriol or Midas could get that ball pretty easily right here. I think Vitriol is probably blocked off for the first at first, just simply because of that little hairy, um, hairy princess and catalyst wall. Although she could run around it, but I don't know if that's the optimal yeah, well, starting she's scenario. Area. She's already got the cover, and you know maybe it's four inches to, to get around the angle on Harry, and then she's got what um, seven after that, and yeah. two inches. So she could probably get it on the hook right there. Although she might have some worries about. Um, she may have some worries about the crowding. She's going to lose a lot of dice if she tries to take a shot from there. Um, so it's sure. Yep, and I think that um, depending on exactly where the uh, bases are, Tenderizer could counter charge because he can swing over um, over me with his two entries. My guess for my guess initially is I think it being likely that the Alchemist player probably tries to disable. Um, disable a couple of their characters and start putting on a little bit of pressure because Veteran Ox took a pretty hefty beating. Um, I believe it's he took 11 damage plus the fire up to 12, or excuse me, 10 damage up to, 10 11, damage up to 11 with the fire. Yeah, um, definitely Catalyst did almost as much damage on to um, Vet Ox as related on Harry there. And I believe I'm that um, we missed it, but actually um, there was damage placed on Ox by Harry also, um, that he hit some momentous, some damaging double pushes, um, which further reduces Ox. I don't think Ox can be on more than about, more than three, four boxes at this point. I don't looking, looking pretty good in, uh, into the Alchemist's favor right now. Um, you know, there's definitely a, a line of play where I think Harry is starting to get pretty beat up as well, so Maybe he can he can weasel in a six point play activation somewhere. I think that's probably something that the butcher player really needs to look at because um, assuming Ox gets taken out this turn, um, which seems at least moderately likely, then that's going to put him behind six to nothing if he doesn't get something evened up quickly. Um, I do think that Harry being severely out of position is going to be a major hindrance too. He's just not going to be able to get back in the game for a while. So let's see a uh, let's see a meat hook pass to play and killing Harry in the scoring at all. That should be <laughs> that might be fun. It's a bold move, Cotton. It's a bold move. <laughs> so it looks like the Alchemist player won the roll to go first this time, um, and is placing four on Harry, four on Vitriol, four on Catalyst, and two on Midas with that extra goal influence. 
Gotta love the support minus. And uh, looks like Butchers are going dump six on Filet, two on Harry, three on Nihoto. I think that's pretty predictable on Filet. You need her to do quite a lot of work this turn. And really, if she can get a couple of dodge bounces, she can get where she needs to be. So looks like Alchemist Harry did go crazy. He hits a momentous knockdown on the dog, and then he's going to buy some attacks on Filet as well. Looks like he got her on the ground, which is an ideal scenario for him early on. You definitely want Filet to be having to clear conditions. So you get a knockdown and get a minus two damage and a double push? Uh, that looks like, yep, that is what happened. Oh, Meat Hook coming in. Taking revenge for her girlfriend. Ball with her. That's dangerous, bringing that ball. There was a misunderstanding right here um, that a knockdown player could not receive a pass. Um, this was not a situation that had arisen for the player before. So there will be a little bit of oddness with, that you'll see with scattering the ball. Um, again, these things happen. The game just kept on going. So Filet looks like she does three damage and a push. Harry's counterattack here. Looks like a good roll there. I think he's going to take a double push. She's a 4-1, so that would seem like a good assumption. Uh, trying to get the crowd, trying to bring in um, disable Meat Hook as much as possible. And here we have the pass, the somewhat rules misunderstanding, um, and the ball is going to scatter after this. We'll just call it a target spot right behind Floyd. How about that? I think that's pretty much what it ends up being. So, yeah, so. <laughs> Looks like Harry got it, though. I mean, a little bit of a Hail Mary there, but uh, worked out all right. And he's got a couple of influence, so that's not a horrible thing. That doesn't put him in the worst situation. I wonder why he didn't try to throw attack on the snake just for momentum purposes. Maybe I guess you got to get that ball out of there. Oh, if you leave that ball right there, then there's gonna be it's gonna be eight to nothing, Malcolmus before too long. Yeah, before too long. I'm curious if he just dropped the ball before he ran up there, get that ball right there in between uh, Tenderizer and uh, oh, looks like we got a charge. Wait, we have um, O Catalyst charging into Ox. It looks like, and he hit the external combustion. Bloop. Down. So he also managed to get the fire on Filet, which I imagine will be promptly cleared by Harry or somebody else um, during the Butcher player's activation. So we now have 6 nothing Alchemist, and he knocks down Tenderizer, and it looks like he is going to push him as well. And I think that's probably out of range of goal defense, which was probably one of his prime goals with that attack. I think the range on that is 4 inches, is that right? Yes, it is. So that's going to make, bring it back to a, that will bring it back to a four for the goal, um, as well as taking counter charge away. Rush keeper there. Let's see. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at uh, that vitriol still needs to go. Looks like she'll go right now. Yep. Uh, we just had a tenderizer. Um, I believe just stood up in place. He did not want to spend the momentum to get him to move afterwards. Vitriol smokes and starts swinging. She has two crowds and the smoke, so she's throwing eight dice. I think she pulls off about five damage on those two attacks. That looks like it's correct. Um, so, so, go ahead, Lon. Yeah, push dodge there, dude. Just a little repositioning to block fully off, I, I would imagine, based on the angles. Vitriol did not hit the clone, so Dave really does not want fully to get into Vitriol at this point. And I think the dog here is just going to stand, and then we've got compound just trying to get a little bit more relevant. Well, that does mean that um, if the butcher player tries to rush fully around the end of vitriol, there's a very good chance that fully ends up being moved in a way she doesn't want to. Yep, so he's got that counter charge threat there. And I don't think Harry's going to be long for this world at this point. He's already taken quite a bit of damage. Yep, does look like she's probably going to take him out here and you know, maybe buy some damage on someone else as well. That's probably the only one she can get to is the snake. But it gets the momentum train built back up a little yeah. bit. Yes. Looks like he hit the blood rain um, and got a little bit of subsequent damage enough with the dodges to get away from Harry and into the snake, and it kills Harry. And in total across these attacks, uh, Filet will do five momentous damage to Naja. Take that, snake. I think we here we're going to have some more mascot abuse in just a second. I think Midas is eyeballing that dog. Come get some, Princess. You don't want any of that. 
and punch the poor dog in the face. It's not very nice. I will give him credit for making sure that he did not do it at the beginning of the turn and triggering Love's Creature. I'm sure the Butcher player would have loved that. Oh, yeah. That would have been brutal. So he hits a push dodge. I think he also did a point of damage there as well. I think he was mostly just trying to build the momentum train a little bit, make sure that he could be as ahead as possible. So we'll see if we can um, get that ball back in here. Looks like he's going to try to kick it to play and maybe dodge her into some more, some more relevance. I guess the Molotov, because he didn't have anything else to do with the influence, all, um, and it looks like he missed everybody, I believe. It's hard to it's hard to set fire to the 5-0 character. And it looks like he does hit that pass to play. See if he takes a dodge here. Looks like he bonus timed it to hit it. Um, I think I saw three dice thrown, and Filet dodges out of the way. So I think that turn probably went about as well for the Alchemist player as he could have wanted it to. Um, um, he, had, he had a hairy dive, but you know someone had to die. So I, I don't think that was a loss he was willing to take. Um, it does look like the game is starting to shift in the Butcher's favor, but maybe it's a little bit too late at this point. Um, you know, up six to three. The, 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 oh, we forgot to mention the snake there dies to bleed. Um, and Filet does have the ball. So if he can win this roll, you know, maybe he can um, maybe he can get that six point activation. I think at this point he really needs to win this roll because um, and unfortunately, judging by um, the influence which we're already looking at on the screen, um, I think that it looks like the alchemist player won because there's a stack of four on vitriol. Oh, vitriol, uh, yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, that, I see. that ball is probably gonna get stripped. And the butcher player really needed to win that scenario, um, simply because if he does not win and the ball gets stripped, I think his chances get a seri go seriously downhill because he needs to be able to get four point activate or six point activations, but be able to get at least one goal to start narrowing the score down. Yeah, but at least <clears throat> um, at least it looks like he'll have one or two activations because there's no way that Vitriol can can get that ball and score all by herself. No, but I do see a central Midas, which is not it's something. Not something yeah. Harry obviously is going to be out of the game for a couple of turns for the Alchemist player. Um, and actually, the shift on compound to bring him around is really paying off right now, um, simply because Vitriol, Vitriol is pretty well protected by compound. There's a lot of cover. A lot of cover. Yeah, and I think that Meat Hook is pretty beat up, if I recall. I think she took some, some damage last term. I don't think she's close to dying, but she's definitely not healthy. And I think she has a fire on her as well, from what I can see. I do think that at this point, um, the Al the butcher player really is going to need to get some kind of work done relatively quickly. Um, that just killing one or two people is not going to be enough to get it rolling again. It's going oh, going to need to take a goal. Yeah, I think really you're going to need to see probably. I think I think ideally either Midas or Vitriol needs to be either taken off the pitch or moved at least far enough away to not be relevant. Um, unfortunately, when they're roaming the middle and not strongly injured. They're just a huge threat that the Butcher player can't ignore. Well, maybe Filet will fluff all her rolls and Filet or Vitriol will fluff all her rolls and Filet can uh, get that six pointer. Looks like Harry's coming back on the field, slowly. So I think we're going to see three on Compound, four on Vitriol. Midas finally gets a little more to four, and Catalyst with three. I'm um, thinking Catalyst is probably trying to finish off uh, Meat Hook there. Yeah, I think that um, if you can get a few attacks scattered between Compound Vitriol and Catalyst, that seems like the that seems like the safe money guess. Looks like he maybe has one more. He's trying to place. Yeah, he put it on Midas. Yeah, it's always good to have a few on Midas when he central play place because he's so flexible. Push dodges shots. So there's Ox coming back in. It looks like he's got six on Filet, three on Meat Hook, two on Harry, and one on Tenderizer. That's a pretty heavy gamble there on uh, Meat Hook, a three on her. I mean, she's, she's not looking super... Maybe he figures the, the Alchemist player has to get the ball right here, which is probably correct. I think I might have personally gone with a little bit more on Tenderizer, because with Reach, he can he has the ability to disable Midas, which is something that nobody else on the team really has. At least that's in range of Midas currently. Midas currently. fast enough to get base to base with him, though? He has two-inch Reach, so he won't trigger on Predictable. Right, but it Oh, there you go. And it looks and like it looks like four six though. Yeah, I guess we could probably get it. And it looks like Vitrell is push dodging um, off of Filet. 
pull it back a little bit into that smoke and then you can tackle. Yep, there it is. And here comes the pass to Midas. So Midas may have been out of it early, but he is going to play centrally, I do believe, now. Extra shake on that roll there. <laughs> you got it, though. And Midas is now completely out of town. That 34-inch dodge on Midas never, ever gets old. This looks like we have Tenderizer getting back into position here. and We can still get that goal defense back and uh, try to hit a tack on um, Catalyst that doesn't hit anything. That's bad luck. He should hit it something on a 3-1. Compound, going to charge me. Hey, hey, big guy, big guy. Where's his knockdown? Is he going to take a party mode? Compound? There's nobody in range of him currently. Oh, okay. I thought he was measuring that. Catalyst. Oh, he was measuring Catalyst to see for further range. I think for pushes, but no. In this case, he's case... comes in, yeah, and hits a knockdown. Yep, we had um, Meat Hook did defensive stance, um, and he knocked her down, and then he did two further damage to her. Looks like a Molotov from Harry. He's going to swing on uh, Compound and miss. He misses the Molotov, excuse me. Yeah, it looks like um, it looks like he bought an attack on Vitriol and brought her into uh, Meat Hook, which unfortunately I'm not sure that's a good idea, giving some crowds to um, giving some extra crowds on Meat Hook when the Alchemist player goes into her. Oh, here goes Midas. Ooh, the double push, double dodge. And in tap in range, um, I'm going to imagine that's going to be a four dice shot. Uh, it's not a good situation for the butcher player. If I were the Alchemist player, I might bonus time it too, just to guarantee you hit that. You got it. So we now have so we now have ten three, ten three Alchemist, and the kickoff back into play again. Barrier rule was a little bit misconstrued, but no big deal. Looks like they might be talking about it. <laughs> oh, here goes Meat Hook with her last hurrah. I think she cleared her conditions, which I don't know if I agree with. I know that she needed to get them off of her, but I think healing for four might have been a better bet here. Yeah, kind of a short-term loss, long-term gain, but I don't think she's long for this world here. No, and if that happens, then that will seal the deal for the Alchemist player. She does put out um, a couple hits on Vitriol. Wait, oh. hold on. Did he just take a parting blow from Compound? He took a parting blow and on the ground. That is... Wow. I think we have seen the last of Meat Hook, and you can't take that parting blow. That's dangerous. dangerous. Oh, goodness. Why did he move? What? I wonder what the thought process that was. I'm sure he was trying to get Meat Hook away and get her out of trouble. Um, I, that's the only thing that I can assume, um, is that he was trying to clear her from trouble. But that's a, that's an incredibly risky play. Maybe he had to, felt like he had to do it. Oh, that was again. Yeah, we just missed it. Maybe he felt like he had to take the chance since he was down so far. He wants to go ahead and recap the last attack there. So the last attack um, was Catalyst charging into Meat Hook, um, who have it recorded she defensive stanced, but it was not enough to save her. He hit the external combustion and promptly exploded her and blew up the game at the same time. Witness me. Wrong Catalyst, but you know what? I think we can give him some leeway in this situation. <laughs> He's working on. He's working on learning witness me. We have ultimately a twelve to three victory for the Alchemist. The Alchemist scored two goals and two takeouts. Um, one goal by Vitriol, one goal by Midas, and there was two takeouts by O Catalyst, of course. Um, managing to take out Veteran Ox and Meat Hook. Um, the Butcher player was able to respond with a few points of their own, taking out Harry and taking out Naja, but wasn't able to pull enough ball control to be able to get any goals to pull the score a little closer. So here's where we need a sound effect that's like, shove the boot in. I think I think I can see what I can work on that. But So in the absence of a sound effect, let's go ahead and shove the boot in as best as we can currently. So I'll let you go ahead and start. So what um, what do you think went wrong? What was the number one thing that went wrong there? For the I think that, unfortunately, I think some of the initial problems probably started in the draft. And I really hate to say that because that gets off on the wrong foot from the very beginning. Um, however, I think lacking the efficiency of Boar and lacking the flexibility of veteran Brisket really came back to haunt him. He couldn't, he had no possibility to score a snapback goal. Um, he had no possibility of quick foot to possibly free up filet, for example. Um, he 
ended up being left hanging in a way that he really, really couldn't afford. Yeah, I mean, I know that it wasn't in his nine, but I mean, even a brisket one there, you know, as a ball killing piece would have been nice. I mean, I know that Midas can still get it off of her, but uh, a five one is nothing to laugh at. And he, I know he can dodge through unpredictable, but you know, at least make him work for it. Um, as you mentioned, the two inch uh, dodge. You know, he would not have had to run that super risky line of play with the ball where Harry went and gone off the ball if he would have had a um, quick time. And I think that would have ultimately benefited him even further because, for one, Harry is much more central and much more in the play. And for another, at that point, I know a six takeout game is not what you would consider an optimal scenario, but it is a much more viable strategy for the butchers than it is for the alchemist player. Right. And I mean, I also agree with you along those lines. You know, if you look at the lineup here, other than Filet, there's not really an awful lot of damage, at least as far as Butcher standards go on that six man list. So, War being in there would have certainly helped shore up, gotten some of those players killed a little quicker. Well, and really, that two inch, adding in that two inch melee on Boar along with his damage potential, I know that Veteran Ox and Tenderizer both have two inch, but. Um, neither one of them really cares, carries the sheer efficiency and killing power that boar does being able to, right. and Ox doesn't able really to... do that great damage. I mean, his momentous two is on the three, which should be doable, but you know, just compared to boar getting the free attacks in, it's not even close, especially with the furious, uh, influence efficiency. And really, um, it's very easy for him. Let's say that he, let's say on the charge, let's say on the charge, he comes in, um, We'll go with Catalyst because it's probably a particularly good target for him. He can reasonably hit three, maybe four momentous damage, take the knockdown on the next swing, so he's swinging on a 2-1, and then score another high couple of damage hits. You're suddenly looking at Catalyst being about a third dead, which feels like a really good trade. Right. I mean, he still uh, he still can go down eventually. Sure, yeah, that's my four. first thought, too, is, is that the draft kind of started things off and maybe a bad foot. Um, you know, but... Like we were talking about at the very beginning, I think the kickoff direction was sort of questionable as well. What do you think about that? I don't think he had a bad idea in trying to disable Midas. I'm sure he was worried about being snared. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure that that has happened to him a number of times, having a mass, a mass snare, occurring. snare occurring. Let me ask you the question, though. You know, would you would you rather kill the ball for an entire turn, or would you rather not get snared as a butcher? Oh, I think absolutely. Taking the taking the northern kick, um, getting up near the fast ground. Let's face it, Vitriol probably would be able to retrieve it unless you have the best scatter possible. Simply, Vitriol gets everywhere she wants to. But that lends into the Butcher's player's game plan. The Alchemist player has to shift his way all the way up to the top of the board. I just can't see that being a good situation for the Alchemist player at that point. It's The tempo is automatically shifting towards the Butcher player to me. I mean, I know she's going 11, but I don't know. That's still a... She probably could get there. You're probably right. Especially since she looks like she's already... I'm looking back at the timestamp about 2 minutes, 50 seconds. But she could probably get there. But uh, I just really feel like that northern kick would have been the way to go. I think so. I think, unfortunately, also looking at um the initial... Looking at the initial positioning, Flay was just a little to the south of Central. Which wasn't horrible, but really probably should have been just a little more centralized to give the threat to either side. Unfortunately, she does only have that six inch kick, so that really does inhibit her to a large amount. But if you just if you move either north or even if you just move central, fully is I believe a seven nine, if I recall her stat line correctly. Correctly. Yeah. So immediately she's up near the midpoint of the field. She's kicking, hoping for a good scatter but she's immediately threatening almost the entire Alchemist line. Right. Where, where she went, you know, it's not nearly as, and, and she would have been, been in the cover too, had she had gone that direction. So she's at least a little bit protected until she decides to move. I think that may have been, I don't know. I mean, we can all I'll go back and forth on it. You could have gotten that ball, but I think that you, you take the chance, right? I mean, going that way, you take the chance that you could have just killed it outright. Whereas kicking it down there, Midas is going to get that ball. And as we saw, I mean, there's, I don't know. We Maybe it was the right choice. Maybe it wasn't. But I, I personally would have gone up there with the ice. 
I think the chance is definitely worth it. Um, give a shout out to Strictly the Worst podcast with the what they now refer to as the Jordan Knack special. When you put the ball in such a location that there is no recovery. But I do think that that would have been a chance worth taking. You can never control the scatter, but even on the off chance that it does that, it's a chance worth taking. Because the Alchemist player otherwise, once that passing line goes, of course you're going to get the first turn goal. It's not even going to be a question. So what do you think about, um, I think we mentioned this earlier, but what do you, at the bottom of turn one, but what do you think about Filet not taking the last activation of turn one? Again, I feel like that really ended up hurting. Um, I feel like two things, this is, and unfortunately I feel like we're going to keep hitting the same spots, but not having Brisket to potentially rearrange Filet a little bit, that's always a good first turn use, extending that threat range, bringing her into a slightly better positions, as well as Filet not getting any momentum out of her stack of, I believe she had five or six, and Filet should be threatening somebody on the first turn, almost every turn, or almost, almost every game. Every game. Right. I mean, it's not like you're really reasonably, with the terrain the way it is right there, with that wall right in the front of the line, I mean, you're not going to prevent vitriol from scoring, I mean, even with Tenderizer, right? I mean, there's just not really going to be to do. So just cut your losses where it is, and I mean, there's no way that he knew that they had um, that he had a uh, knee slider. But even though he did knee slider back there, I still think had Filet gone last, he probably would have had a good shot of getting into him. Well, Vitriol did hit the clone, um, so that would have severely messed Filet up. That does create does a, lot problems. Problems. a lot of problems. Um, however, but however, where she was, she was pegged onto that wall. You go base to base, you can only dodge like half an inch backwards, if I remember right. She was a little further out. Okay, that's right, because she wasn't actually in the uh, for me, when I'm thinking if she, and this comes down to her kickoff positioning, if she's a little more central, there's no way to tell how the game would have turned out had this happened. But she might have been, had she been in a position where she could have gone a little bit more towards Harry, that actually could have been a prime target for her at the very beginning. Harry is relatively easy for her to knock down on the charge. Um, he's a 3-1, so she's needing to hit 6 out of 12 dice. Um, not that horrible for Filet to pull off. If she starts abusing Harry at that point, then the momentum train's going, and it's setting up disabling Harry for future turns, which really, really will hurt the Alchemist player. Yeah, that sounds good. And uh, the only other thing that I really wonder about, and I know that um, Filet ended up getting uh, goaded, but I'm still really curious about why he didn't just leave the ball there. And when the ball got kicked off after the first goal and it was a couple inches away from that icy patch, he went and used Harry to go get that ball and pretty much bring it back. And, you know, it took a little while, but it really did, he really did bring the ball back into play on behalf of Alchemy's player. I mean, I know that he wanted to use it to, to at least get Filet's influence relevant with pass, but um, I don't know. That ball being way out there with no one able to get it, that's I think I'm going to strongly consider just leaving it there. What do you think? I think I would have probably left it there also. Um, I think if you're going to bring it in, then you might want to be ready to kill the ball again um, instead of making that pass. He made that pass to Filet on the third turn to take her out wide, and I'm sure he was trying to get the ball a little out wide and set up a six-point goal, or six-point activation, excuse me. But I think all that did was play back into the Alchemist player's hands. Harry could have very easily just kicked the ball back out towards the corner of the board and stalled for another turn because, sure, the Alchemist player was going to go up 8-3 to three at that point. But that gives Filet time. That gives Meat Hook time. Um, that gives a lot of players time to get back in and start building the game back towards the Butchers. I'm trying to find where he was. Yep, so he before he went and chased that ball down, he was right next to that wall on the back side. So with seven inches of sprint and a two-inch reach, and it's not super hard for Harry to hit a two-inch push. I think it's on his second play room. Yep, so his second moment, his second column, right? So rather than go chase that ball, I think there's a line of play there where he runs up and just donks the alchemist Harry on the head and pulls him two inches forward. And then Filet doesn't even need to receive a pass to get him. Do you see what I'm saying there? Oh, yes. I actually missed that play. That would have been, I think you're right. It's hard to judge distances on the board, but it looks like from the angles that the bases are at, if he had been able to pull Harry two inches, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I was just thinking about when you deploy, you're eight inches away from the center line. And he's in front of the deployment zone. So, I mean, it's got to be less than nine. 
that diagonal. So he could totally get up there. Even I mean, I don't know if he could charge. He might can charge because he's still got a straight. I don't think he can charge because of the way the wall is. But, you know, if he takes a sprint and an attack, I mean, that's the same two influence that he's going to use to to sprint, get the ball, and kick it in, right? And he just sprints and attacks, gets a two inch push, donks him, and then he's all of a sudden there's no more block out from better and ox from that goad, and the ball is dead. I think in that situation also. Um, I know he wanted to get a little bit of work done with Meat Hook, but looking at her positioning, and I know this is speculative and it's after the fact, but looking at her positioning, she probably could have gotten away with only giving one to Meat Hook um, so that she can tool up her target of choice, whether it's Ox, whether it's Foley, whoever may want to be picked in this situation. Speaking Uh, of um, Meat Hook, Meat Hook's got pushes for days as well. I mean, I don't think that it would be any problem between Harry and Meat Hook getting the line there for Foley to charge Harry. Actually, that um, looking at Meat Hook's playbook now, um, that she's got the looks like she's got the double push on three. Oh, three. Yeah. Non momentous, but all you have to do in that situation is move Princess out of the way. You have a great angle. Yeah, I think that's a very viable tactic. Um, and Harry might not even need to sprint at that point to get around. Um, it's hard to judge right. distances, but yep. And again, you know, from, I love me some shark, right? I mean, I love when people bring the ball back into play for them. <laughs> that was my biggest concern of that game, was um, some of the ball handling on the pusher side. You and your stinky fish. fish. I mean, even even such a thing as bringing that ball forward with, when Meat Hook had the ball and charged it on Harry. I was like, well, why didn't you just kind of drop it? He sat there and delivered it to him. But hey, I mean, it, it's a learning experience, and it was a good match overall. I think we saw the kind of classic Alchemist 2 and 2 there, just being OP. Well, I will actually, um, <laughs> to rag on the Alchemist player really quickly, and this is minor, but I do think it had a bit of an effect on the game. Um, so if you go on the beginning of turn 2, Ox goes in, he whirling chains Harry, um, and all that. The Alchemist player took a counterattack with Harry that when you're looking at the playbook, Ox is going to be attack 11, he needs to hit four hits on a 3-1 to be able to get the whirling change to drag everybody in. I don't think that was a very good counterattack by the Alchemist player, and that really cost him because Vitriol couldn't stand up. To me, that, to yeah, me, that that's it, a little stuff, though. It's, it's little stuff, but had the Butcher player played things a little differently, I think that could have ended up being a big difference simply because with the ability to momentously push dodge off of Ox, potentially... Vitriol might have been able to get back into ball retrieval range and threaten a score from that upper end. Okay, I can buy that. I can buy that. I, I only mention that because she is the fastest player on Alchemist, bar none. Um, Midas be, can dodge his way into a higher speed, but Vitriol just simply moves that quickly. Nadja maybe could have gotten to the ball eventually, but it still feels like Vitriol, that mobility, that could have played a big role. Yep, sounds good to me. So any final thoughts? Uh... Before we uh, let this one go into the record book? No, I think, like you said, it was a classic Alchemist 2-2. Two and two. I think the Butcher player, I think he, he was trying Tenderizer for the first time, and I don't think he quite... The mechanics weren't quite there on how to use them. Um, I think he knows there's some lineup efficiency problems that he could work on. Uh, but Alchemists are a hard team to play into. There's a lot of high defensive stats, a lot of movement, and probably more damage potential than most people would expect. Yep, absolutely. I know you only play Shark, so you don't actually know what damage oh, is. But, but... I play Corsair occasionally. I dabble in Corsair. <laughs> I'm good, man. That was a good match, and uh, look yeah. forward to doing another yeah. one. Yeah, we hope to be bringing another match. Uh, this one took a little longer than we hoped to pull together. I know it's an inaugural episode, so nobody really knows that. But we hope to be able to bring another match a little faster. Uh, and thank you very much for watching the first episode of Witness Me. This has been Brian. And this is Lon. Make sure you uh, let us know in the comments or like or share it or uh, do what you will. Tell us how we can improve. We appreciate you listening.